there is a, a gap just from the way the uh, fora uh, and the institutions post World War II were created. Obviously, they were created by the victors. Uh, they were created in an in a very open-minded way, but they do reflect the balance of power that uh, that existed at that time. Uh, over the years, the international institutions have uh, tried to adjust, uh, but they do reflect uh, in in a number of ways in in, in uh, the the views of the of the post-war powers, uh, both in terms of voting power, the structure of boards. The, sometimes the, uh, the nature of recruitment uh, and uh, you know, a lot of the recruitment even of emerging market candidates is from uh, uh, people who've been taught by the U.S. universities. Uh, that creates a certain sameness in, in attitudes and an unwillingness to question certain beliefs. And I, I fully admit having, uh, you know, being a product of, uh, of those institutions. Uh, that it does reflect a certain kind of groupthink, uh, which could be sometimes problematic. Uh, I think that uh, there's no need, need to uh, throw all the good out with the bad, but let's try and reform in, s in such a way that we uh, increase the ability of these institutions to understand the problems across the globe and reflect the concerns there. I mean, one example is, uh, is of uh, monetary policy in the industrial country central banks because that is usually backed up by a huge amount of research by those central banks themselves and because the views of those central bankers coincide with the views of the international institutions both uh, economists from both coming from the same sort of uh, training uh, there is a sense of always giving those the policies a, a free pass this is good for you, this is good for the globe, uh, and, uh, you know, spillovers uh, are minor. Uh, it takes a fair amount of, uh, of uh, you know, pushing to say, no, no, the spillovers aren't minor, and this doesn't need to be the way things are. If you argue that your policy is needed in order to enhance growth in your country, what was wrong with, say, uh, China, uh, sort of focusing on having a competitive exchange rate in order to enhance growth in its country. Uh, there was a lot of objection to that in the early 2000s, that China was intervening excessively in the exchange rate and having an overly competitive exchange rate. Well, why question that if anything is fine for growth? Uh, after all, isn't Chinese growth good for the global economy? And we see today that it is. So uh, I think there's double speak here. Uh, if you uh, say growth is always good, regardless of the spillover effects, uh, then you shouldn't have objected to China. If you think that there are spillover effects uh, of a con one country's growth could ha adversely affect another country's growth, then let's have an open discussion about it and stop hiding behind uh, you know, the veil of monetary policy. I, I think we need to go beyond opinions. Uh, opinions are useful in, in triggering debate. But beyond that, we need to go to as, as, as good a set of facts as we can get a hand on, which means research, which means data, which means uh, looking at the effects uh, um, uh, in, in, uh, not in real time, but, but soon after to see what we learn from it. I think putting it all together can inform policy. I've always maintained that what emerging markets often get enough time to speak at international fora but we don't bring to those, uh, to those discussions the full weight of data. Uh, it's changing. Uh, increasingly, emerging markets are doing a better job of research in their own countries. But it's important that when they have discussions, they be prepared, uh, both with the facts, but also new ideas, to, to set the agenda, so to speak, rather than always be passive consumers of the agenda. Uh, or reactions, uh, reactionaries to the agenda. So I think if they are to play a more constructive, responsible role, given their greater size in the global economy, it's important that the emerging markets benefit from broader research initiatives like the Global Policy Lab, which uh, is interested in trying to foster debate and discussion within emerging markets and across the world. I think this is important.